Neya Nehio. My name is Kitsune. I am the offspring of a residential school survivor. Many of the students here have similar stories where their parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents went to residential schools, where our culture, our language, and identity was stripped from us. Our practice is forbidden. Today I'm here to give thanks by doing a land acknowledgement and thanking the caretakers that came before us. But instead of doing a specific acknowledgement, I put down some tobacco today for you to have a safe journey and to enjoy the show. If you'd like to know whose land you're currently occupying, check out these two resources here. So whether you're here in Ontario, in Toronto like the students, or nationwide, giving thanks to those who came before us means that we are giving thanks to our ancestors and the many generations who came before us today. Welcome to the Center for Indigenous Theatre's program info session. My name's Kai. And my name is Kate, and we're part of the administrative team at CIT. We're excited to be here today to talk about our school and how you can become a student. Have you thought about pursuing a career in the arts? Let us know in the comments. If you're watching us right now, you probably have some questions about the Center for Indigenous Theatre and what we're all about. We're hopefully here to answer all those questions. We'll tell you a little bit about our history at CIT, what the program and school year will look like, and what we do to keep you safe, as well as a little bit on how to, as well as how to apply and get into our program. During our short time today, we'll also get a sneak peek at some of CIT's creations. Our students will be showcasing their skills. Also, we are able to sit down with one of our alumni, Mike Healy, for an interview, so stay tuned. Let's start off with a quick history lesson. CIT was founded by James Bowler and it was originally a six week program called Native Theatre School. The Native Theatre School was then renamed Center for Indigenous Theatre in 1994. We went on to become a full time program in 1999. We then expanded to a three year program in 2002, then added a fourth year in 2018. If you're still wondering what we're really all about, CIT is a post-secondary program that provides training in acting, voice, and movement. We offer, we offer cultural classes that are focused on dance, song, and oral history. We have partnerships across Canada that we're able to utilize and share experience with, experiences with throughout the year. Our students are immersed in land-based teachings with Dabajimajig storytellers in Manitowani, and in autumn, and onomatizing and Nipissing First Nation. Now it's time for our first year student, DM Lefortune. DM recorded a monologue. Let's take a look. Excuse me? I don't look like native to you? Indigenous, Aboriginal, First Nations, Métis, Indian? I could be Southern European. I could be Asian, Slavic. You know what your question does? All it shows is it demonstrates how ignorant you are about Native people. Why does it matter what I look like anyway? Are you going to censor yourself? Oh, there it is. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Ah, oh, that snap. Oh, baseball cap? Yeah, I got a baseball cap. You see my baseball cap? Yeah, I got a baseball cap. Brave. We're all brave. That was really great, Kate. What do you think about DM's performance? That was awesome. I loved it. We have some pretty talented students coming through the school and it's really fun watching them perform in the space. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Hey Kai, do you wanna hear a joke? Sure. Okay, why do people in theater say break a leg before you go on stage? I don't know, why? Because every play has a cast. <laughs> Okay, it's back to the program. Here's the outline of the upcoming year. 
The next cohort of first year students will start school in September. They will begin with an orientation period of CIT in Toronto. Students will then enter full-time training with a winter break in between their studies. Our first year students will then continue training from January until May leading up to graduation. Due to COVID-19, special protocols have been put into place. This includes, but not limited to, mandatory social distancing and facial coverings, as well as sanitization and screening before entering CIT studio. The health and safety of our staff, faculty, and student members is paramount to the utmost importance. If that leaves you wondering what your class schedule might look like this upcoming school year, um, as Current schedule, as current health and safety regulations continue to develop, your training may be influenced by COVID-19. As you can see, one schedule includes 100% in-person training and the other schedule includes a mixture of 60% online and 40% in-person training. You have a variety of classes at CIT, including dance, voice, and physical, physical theater, singing, and story creation. As they say, the show must go on. Now it's time for an interview with our alumni, Mike. He graduated from CIT in 2013. We were lucky to have an opportunity to have an interview with him. Also, stay tuned after the interview, we have a performance by first year students, Keen Buffalo and River Waterham. Like I've, I've always kind of wanted to be uh... Well, to be a teacher, right? To be a cultural, basically my own people encouraged me, you know? It wasn't just one person, it was basically a community, right? So I wouldn't just point, point, point it down to just one individual at all. Um, but like meeting um, Muriel and uh, the intensive program was actually a big encouragement too, especially with Rose because uh, they, they saw the natural ability and everything and encouraged me to you know to to do the full-time program and so they gave me the scholarship and i didn't hesitate at all so i guess i'd say my community um as an as indigenous blackfoot you know was more or less my inspiration what was your favorite experience at cit uh that would be going up to north bay uh with uh sid and um I just totally forgot her name. Penny. <clears throat> Sid and Penny on Ritagzi. Uh going up there and traveling and you know, performing with their their theater little space and everything like that. That was, you know, because to me they're like family now. You know, the miracles are like family. <laughs> yeah. So traveling, you know, traveling up north, you know, that was actually one of the highlights. Uh, actually, also too working with, uh, uh, like I said before, was the Shakespeare because there's, it's a language in itself, and to learn and to to embody what he's trying to say, you know, kind of teaches you about yourself in a sense. You know, I don't know if that answers your question, but the traveling part up north to Sid and Penny was actually pretty a good highlight. Yeah, that definitely does. I hope. Um, that our students are able to experience like traveling with mm -hmm. our group too. And well, and the fact that, you know, um, uh, our, our cultural, our culture, you know, is encouraged within the program, right? Yeah. And that, that's yeah. something that a lot of schools don't have. And, you know, I appreciate that a lot.
I'm Rose Della, the Artistic Director and Principal of the Centre for Indigenous Theatre. CIT is a post-secondary performing arts training centre. We offer a three and four year full-time conservatory style education. Our program is designed to connect theatre training with traditional and contemporary Indigenous cultural practices to advance artistic development, industry and business practices, and ultimately to cultivate professional opportunities. You will come here to train, to learn, to grow, to become the emboldened and inspired voices of tomorrow, the new generation of passionate Indigenous culture creators to tell your stories in your voice. That was awesome. We told you we have a lot of talent coming through CIC. Did that inspire you to want to apply? Let us know in the comments. Wondering what, re what requirements are needed in order to apply to Center for Indigenous Theatre? You must identify as First Nation, Métis, or Inuit. You must be 18 years of age or older. You need to have a grade 10 English level or higher. Have an interest in acting, movement, voice, self-discovery, and theatre. As well as an interest in exploring Indigenous culture and knowledge. Now that we've gone over requirements, here are the important documents that you're required to submit when applying to the Center for Indigenous Theatre. They include an updated resume, a 500 word essay expressing your interest in theatre and coming to CIT, along with two references that can vouch for your interest in theatre, a photocopy of your health card, and an audition video of you do, doing some script work. To help you out, we've created a video on how, on how to make an audition at CIT. Take a look. Hi, I'm Sam Twin. I'm a fourth year student here at Center for Indigenous Theatre. Hi, I'm Teresa Cutknife, and I'm also a fourth year student at the Center for Indigenous Theatre. Uh, we'll give you some tips and tricks on uh, how to do your monologues and get them sent into CIT. Yes, so first find an age-appropriate monologue for yourself. Uh, use something from the Indigenous canon, uh, something like from Thompson Highway, Drew Hayden Taylor, uh, Kenneth T. Williams, do you have any more? Keith Barker, Alanis King, and if you have any troubles finding anything like that, you could email CIT and we'll provide you with a monologue. So Sam, what did you do for your um, audition into CIT? I did uh, Ivic from Thunderstick by uh, Kenneth Williams. What about you? What did you do? I was sent a collection of different uh, story pieces from Coyote City. What to wear, uh, wear something simple, neutral colors, something that you're comfortable and confident in. Yep. And you know, it does, there's not really a time limit for it, but uh, it should be around three minutes. If you have any other skills that you want to show, like singing, dancing, hand drumming, anything and everything, feel free to submit it. But you do have to have a monologue. Unless, of course, you're a storyteller and you have a story. Uh, then you could submit that instead of the monologue, but no accents, please. And the most important thing is to have fun. And if you stumble, that's okay. Yep. You can do it over and over as many times as you feel. Have any other difficulties like doing your, your monologue or audition? Uh, probably the hardest part was memorizing it all. And uh, I had somebody film it for me. I did not know that it was best to film it with a neutral background, so I filmed it just in a living room and there was a lot of uh, things in the background, but it worked out. And you don't need a professional camera. Uh, we're doing this on an iPhone 10. You can stack it up on some books or put it on a table, whatever you got to do. As long as it's capturing basically from half of your torso up so we can see your shoulders and your head. You could have a, a relative or somebody hold the camera for you and you could just send that into CIT. Have fun.
We have ongoing requirements in order to remain in the program. Wondering what it takes to be a CIT graduate? You are expected to be on time and present for all classes and you must actively be looking for funding while you attend your studies. Tuition costs each year are $3,750. If you're unable to receive band funding, there are other organizations that you can submit applications to for funding. These include, but not limited to, Inspire Foundation, Dreamcatcher Charitable Foundation, Métis Nation of Ontario, Canada Post, Mississaugas of the Credit, and other organizations. If you are in need of funding application assistance, contact us at Centre for Indigenous Theatre. No student is ever turned away due to lack of funding. Hey Kai, what's your favourite part about working at CIT? Well, there's a lot of things I like about CIT, but I would have to say my favourite thing is that the environment feels a lot like home and we're like a big theatre family. <laughs> Please don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. And also stay tuned for our upcoming year-end show, Bannock Republic. For more information coming soon, check us out, check out our website. And thanks to our funders. We With their like to thank, we would like to say thank you to our funders. With their generous support, we are able to provide a school for our students. The Department of Canadian Heritage, the Ontario Arts Council the Toronto Arts Council, Ms. Waybeek Aboriginal Employment and Training, Hastings Park Foundation of Rights and Freedoms, Ontario Arts Foundation. Thank you for attending our program info session. We hope to see you next school year. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you, we look forward to seeing you soon. Also make sure you like and subscribe to our channel for our upcoming shows. Bye. Bye.